Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Um, my name is Andreas Kobernitz. Um, I'm coming from Austria, from Brunham Gebirge. I'm working in Vienna, and Brunham Gebirge is a, a nice village in the south of Vienna. And uh, thank you for the invitation to talk at the BDS Spring Meeting. Uh, my presentation deals with the results of a six-year study addressing the following question. How does a dragonfly community respond to rapid wetland overgrowth? Uh, as we know, many species disappear in or when habitat conditions uh, become appropriate, but how does this disappearance work and how does this uh, progress function? So, um, firstly, I will introduce the location where the study was conducted. Then I will give some words on uh, the methods and uh, the results comprise a general overview. And then I will focus on some species, representative species, and uh, some conclusions will round up the presentation. So this is Austria uh, with the river Danube, the Alps, and the capital Vienna. And uh, this is the small village Maria Enzersdorf where the study site is located and nearby is my home town Brunnen Gebirge. So this is a former um, monastery campus, St. Gabriel, situated in Maria Enzersdorf. And we are above 209 meters above sea level. And the real estate uh, company of this uh, monastery constructed an overflow and seepage basin in the year 2014. And this basin or reservoir is a key element of a dewatering system in order to balance high water levels uh in this pond situated on the 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 campus and uh on balance high groundwater levels so here you have the basin or reservoir in an aerial view the basin here has a length of 100 meters and a width of 30 meters and uh the main area is a small permanent area with groundwater contact. This is the reason why this area is permanent. And nearby, there is a small temporary area. And some words now to the methods. The study was conducted from 2016 to 2021. An important point is the basin is surrounded by a fence with a locked door. And in this time, in the study time, I was the only person who entered the basin. Uh, therefore, successional processes running in this wetland were completely undisturbed. So this was a kind of open air laboratory. And uh, as I said, the, the succession processes were undisturbed. Due to the uh vicinity of my home, there were 236 site visits conducted in this uh, period. And the high number of excursions allowed analysis on phenology, flight periods, and uh, maturation time, and so on. The excursions uh, concentrated on the counts and recordings of tenorals of adults and of the observation of reprodu reproductive behavior of damsels and dragonflies. So let's have a look on the climate situation. What you see here is the mean air temperatures of the meteorological seasons of the study time of the study period in red dots 
winter, spring, summer, and autumn. And compared to this, uh, you see the mean air temperatures of the reference period from this time. And this time is depicted in blue. So what you see here is the dramatic situation of, of uh, climate change and temperature, temperature increase uh, that the mean temperature in are uh, significantly increased com compared to the uh, to, uh, mean temperature of the reference time. So let's have a look at the wetland. This is the basin. This is the fence around it. And this was the situation at the start of the investigation. You see a quite nice mosaic of open water areas of uh, halophytes, of macrophytes, submerged macrophytes, floating macrophytes. And uh, in 2017, you can see the increased um, extension, expansion of stands of halophytes, of high-growing halophytes like Typha or Xenoplectus. And you can see in, August, uh, in, in the autumn of August, the whole area was completely overgrown. And this was a situation from 2019 until the end of the study of uh, 2021. There were nearly no open water areas left. And the situation in winter, this is important for the dragonfly community. Even in very cold winters, as in 2017, uh, the area did not completely freeze. There were still um, water patch, uh, still open wa water areas that didn't freeze. And it would, this was very important for the dragonfly community. And this, this was due to the groundwater contact. So let's come to the result. First, a uh, general overview. In the whole investigation period, in this six year period, a total of 32 species uh, were found. In Austria, we have a dragonfly species inventory of 78 species. And um, the large red damselfly, Pyrosoma nymphula, is assumed to be the only species with a very small, but with a breeding autochthonous population during the whole duration of the study during the whole six years. Um, at least occasionally endangered species were recorded. Um, for example, the southern data, Sympetro meridionale, which is in Austria threatened with extinction. You see here a male quite infested by many Arenurus mites. And another example is the dainty damselfly, Tsunagan citulum, also threatened with extinction, a very interesting species. And uh, I think it, it is the species recolonized Great Britain some years ago, I think 2010. So, um, let's come to the development of the number of species. The species or the number of individuals are allocated to abundance classes from single records to extremely abundant. And these numbers of individuals refer to a shoreline length of 100 meter. What you see here is the first year of the study in 2016, 27 species appeared, and most of the species in higher or even quite high abundance classes. In the following years, the species number decreased, and uh, particularly the higher abundance classes disappeared. The number of species recorded only a single record increased. This means species came for 
uh, hunting for basking or something else uh, and found this wetland inappropriate and left it soon. And this species, this extremely abundant species was the only species which colonized this wetland when it was become already overgrown, totally overgrown. This was the killed schema, which appeared in 2019. A similar process is shown here by the number of individuals. In the first year, we have a total number of nearly 900 damsel and dragonflies appearing at the wetland. What you can see here is the most abundant damselfly with its uh, individual no number of individuals and the most uh, abundant dragonfly. In the first year, it was Ishnura pumilio with about 350 individuals and Sympetrum striolatum with 150 individuals. The number of individuals significantly decreased in the following years until a number of about 40 individuals. And due to the appearance of the killed schema of Ortetrum cerulescens, the individual numbers increased in the last year of the study. So let's have a look on some representative or selected species. And let's start with the scarce blue-tailed damselfly, Ishnura humilio. What you can see here uh, is the numbers of the individuals in the different years. We see the end, the month, the month starting with April, ending with September, and the decades of the months. What you see is an early starting flight period in 2016, in the second decade of April, and here in Austria, in the, for example, low altitudes, this species is Bibultinus. You see a wonderful expression of two generations, a large uh, gener summer uh, generation with about 250 individuals and a large uh, early generation with about 100 individuals. And what we see is a very long and an extended flight period until the third decade of September. In the following years, uh, the population broke down. This line is 2017. The number of individuals significantly decreased and there was a second generation, but this generation was lower than and uh, uh, than the first generation. In the following years, there were also few numbers of individuals, 2018 and 2019. And very important, there was one, only one, the first generation. There was no second generation. It was very interesting. Another interesting point is, um, as far as the reproductive behavior is Concerned. What you see here is the total number of days of observation days in which this species was recorded at the site. In 31 days of 2016, I could uh, record Ishnura pumilio. The second column shows the days in which freshly emerged or juvenile individuals were recorded. And these column, this column shows the number of uh, days in which reproductive behavior, uh, pairing wheels, copula, and tandems were observed. What you see here is the decrease of the flight period at the site, the decrease of the presence of the species at the site. What you see here is that only one generation uh, was built up by this species. Another important point is that the days in which reproductive behavior was observed decreased significantly. Here you have only one day in which reproductive behavior was observed. In 
the last in the not in the last year of its appearance in 2019 some individuals appeared but there was no reproductive behavior observed at all and one year later 2020 uh, the scarce blue tail damselfly didn't appear anymore another species is the common data sympetrum striolatum This is develop, the, the development of the species during uh, the six years. What you see here is a white turtle great population in the first year, also 2016, with a flight period early starting in the first decade of June and lasting until the third decade of November. We have a long emergence period and uh, after maturation, the adults came back to the wetland and showed reproductive behavior. What you see here is an obvious decline in the number of individuals from 150 to 25 in the following year. Another point what you see is a significant decrease of the presence of the species at the wetland in 2020 and the lack of freshly emerged individuals in 2021, although reproductive behavior was observed one year before. Was, what was the reason for this interesting development here? The reason is shown here by uh, an analysis of reproductive behavior. The first column shows the number of observation days with observed pairing wheels and tandems. And as we know, this phase of reproductive behavior is followed by egg deposition. This column shows the number of days in which egg deposition activities were observed. In the first three years, sorry, in the first three years, uh, as expected, the number of days with observed copulation, tandem, and egg depositions are nearly the same. What do you see here is, Species showed pairing behavior as copulation wheels and tandems, but stopped with egg deposition activities. This means they paired, they had, they searched in tandem flights for egg deposition sites, didn't find them, or couldn't reach to the water surface to, due to the halophytes and the halophyte coverage and left the site in tandem flights without depositing eggs. Um, the last group of species or the last species of the schemas I want uh, to address, the southern schema or Tetrum brunium colonized this wetland when it was uh, characterized by open water areas, this species has a quite pioneer character, and this species was replaced by the killed schema uh, Atetum cerulescence species, which prefers more densely vegetated sites, and it appeared 2019 and developed a very large, a very huge population. Uh, as in 2019, uh, freshly emerged individuals were found, egg deposition must have been taking place 2018, but there were no egg deposition activities were observed anymore. So what we know is that the skilled schema uh, has a brownish, thorax and the thermoregulation is made, for example, by postural adjustment, like you can see here, by the obelisk posture. 
and a slight renaissance of the thorax is shown in older individuals, in older males, or in the southern, more Mediterranean uh, areas of its distribution area. An interesting point observed here in the wetland was that I could find kill schemas like this, resembling to uh, southern schemas, resembling to Ortetobonium. And I think this is uh, a thermoregulatory variation, uh, a stronger renaissance as adaptation to increasing air temperatures. This strong renaissance allows males to hold longer uh, their territories, even in quite hot uh, environments. And I had contact with Steve Chem, uh, and I saw a photo of uh, made by him. And I think there are also such extraordinary blue specimens uh, of this species appearing in Great Britain. Here you have another example of this extraordinary blue and bright colored killed schema. Uh, this phenomenon was also observed uh, at this site in the black tail schema or tetrum cancellatum. Some males also appeared very bright, very blue and, and bluish with a bluish uh, pruinescent thorax. So let's turn to the conclusions of this six year study. Only the killed schema colonized the already densely covered site. Uh, and the large red damselfly was the only species with a quite small, but with an autochthonous population during the six years. For the majority of the species, the rapid development of the reed coverage represented a quite heavy deterioration of the habitat conditions. And this was expressed by a reduction of the number of individuals, by reduction of the period spent at the site until the species disappeared. And what means the reduction of the period spent? Adult individuals actively left the site when uh, the conditions become inappropriate, they spend, uh, they left the site to colonize better ones. After maturation, I could see it in, in Sympetrum striulatum, after maturation, individuals do not return to the water body when they emerged, where they emerged, and new colonizers did not recognize the water body due to the missing optical stimuli induced by the horizontally polarized light reflected by the water surface, which is so important for the recognition of new habitats. And sure, when individual, the number of individuals are quite low, predation has a stronger impact when the numbers of individuals are low. The second point was the changes in reproductive behavior. There were reduced pairing activities and or egg deposition behavior. And this was due, for example, as in Ishnura pumilio, a reduced encounter rate between males and females due to reduced abundances and tandems do not recognize egg deposition sites to the, due to the missing optical stimuli, as uh, I could see in Sympetrum striolato. And tandems do not reach the egg deposition sites due to the plant structure. And the last point is the impacts of higher temperatures due to climate change. I could see it in a change in the flight periods, in the change in the emergence periods, uh, they started quite early. 
And another very interesting point is the stronger pruinosity uh, in the thorax of the schema species. So that brings me to the end of my presentation and thank you all for listening. Thank you.